the majority of my accomplishments in my life have happened over the last, I would say, 17 months tops. And, you know, since creating this dream book, I've been able to accomplish 15% of my entire life goals. And that's within a year and a half. So it's it's no BS. It really works. It may sound kind of woo-woo. I'm going to go through a, a few different things. But I promise you, this will be the most fun out of everything you do. It's, it's, it actually is a whole lot of fun. So I want to start with a question. I want to, I want to talk to you guys and say, you know, a goal is a dream with a deadline. You're listening to the Creativepreneur Podcast, Episode 23, and today we're talking about how to use smart goals to create the life you want. So, stay tuned. Hello, my name is Rodney Washington, author, artist, and entrepreneur, and I'm passionate about helping creatives just like you do what lights you up and make a comfortable living while doing it. Each week, I'll be sharing timely business growth, marketing, and mindset hacks and interviews with courageous creative entrepreneurs to inspire you to get paid for your creativity. So grab your favorite beverage, sit back, and enjoy today's show. This episode of the podcast is sponsored by my free audio book and PDF, Get Paid for Your Creativity, 57 Ways to Monetize Your Gifts and Create True Security for Yourself. To get your hands on a copy of the free audiobook and PDF, go to getpaidforyourcreativity.com forward slash 57 ways gift. Well, believe it or not, we are officially entered the last quarter of 2019. Soon a new year will be upon us, 2020. But you know what? You don't have to wait until the clock strikes strikes midnight to start thinking about the things you want to accomplish so you can finish the the remainder of this year with a bang and get yourself on the right path for the new year. And that's what this episode is all about. How to use smart goals to create the life that you want. I'm reaching back into my archives this, this episode also for an episode that I did actually quite a few years ago with Corey Wadden. And he did a wonderful interview. And again, the Montage Your Gifts Masterclass. If you listen to episode 22, I shared an archive episode Uh, with Rita D.L. Barber, and she talked about uh, also similar topics to what we're talking about today. But I wanted to really deep dive into this even further, because this is what I feel really sets apart the dreamers from the people who accomplish the things that they really want. They're the ones who decide and get really clear about what they want, and they go about the process of setting goals that will support what they want. And what I love about the conversation that I had with Corey and why I feel like it's just as relevant today as it was when we first did the interview is that there is, you know, goals never change. I mean, goals and the way we want things never change. What we want may change, but the desire to have things in our life never changes. So I feel very strongly that the things that Corey and I talked about in that original interview It's just as relevant as it is today, as it was back then, you know, setting goals, getting clear about what you want and really using strategies and techniques to accomplish what you want in a way that empowers you. I don't know about you, but for me personally, sometimes setting goals can be for me personally a little debilitating because I get overwhelmed by all of the the big thinking that I have and I don't know how I'm going to do it and I kind of get caught up in the how. But what I love about what we talked about in the interview with Corey is that we, yes, we want to figure out the how, but it's more important to get clear about the dream first, because once you're clear about the dream, something shifts inside of you internally and it propels you to want to move forward so that when willpower fades, commitment and dedication and excitement remains. And that's what I really want to get across in this interview. And what I'm going to share with you in this archive. So again, there are going to be a couple of references to things that were available when the original interview was done. But the show notes for everything that is currently available is on getpayforyourcreativity.com forward slash 023 for episode 23. A lot of the links are still available. Some of the things are not. I think his website, Corey's website, Millionaire by 25 is no longer available. I checked. But all of the content and the resources that he recommended 
are still available. And I'll also have a, a special summary guide that I created that accompanies what we're talking about in the interview as well. And links to download that is also available on the show notes page again at getpayforyourcreativity.com forward slash 023 for episode 23. So I hope you enjoy this, uh, this session this week. Uh, use it to create goals for yourself. Feel free to share it with me on Instagram. You can do that at instagram.com forward slash creativepreneur podcast. And you'll also find the notes for that in the link also in the show notes. So enjoy and I'll see you next week. Also, before you listen, I just want to give you a heads up that there are some expletives in the interview. The original title of this interview uh, did have an expletive in the title, which I took out of the title. I actually changed the title, but in the original interview, those are still there. So instead of bleeping them out, I figure we're all adults here. Um, I'm just want to give you a heads up so that you are aware. If you do have children nearby and you don't want them to hear, it's not, um, the interview is not full of that. It's just in the title that we do mention at the very top of our discussion together. So again, if you are, have, uh, children around or sensitive ears and you don't like, um, sort of a little bit stronger language, you might want to pause or just fast forward through that part. Like I said, it's only a few episodes, only, only a few parts of the interview that's in there where we use uh, an expletive. So anyway, just want to give you a heads up. Okay. Corey Watton is a serial entrepreneur. Um, he is an actor, a documentary, but a filmmaker, and he's uh, figured out a simple, fun, and creative way to answer uh, many of the questions that you might have about whether or not you can achieve your dreams. I want to stop for just a moment before I let Terry, I mean, Carol, Corey, sorry, Corey uh, mm-hmm. share with us. Imagine that you have the power to predict your future. What would that look like? What would you do? Where would you go? And who would you meet? And this young man has actually, as I said, figured out a really fun, simple, and creative way to actually answer all of these questions. He's going to talk about that with us today. You know, Corey credits, he has, and it's called a dream book. Actually, he's going to talk about the creation of a dream book and why, although it may for some sound woo-woo, it's actually really fun and it's really powerful. And I'll tell you already before we even go into what he's going to talk about with it, Corey credits his book for his ability to travel across Canada, secure interviews with over 10 prolific millionaires, meet many of his hero heroes, amass a 20,000-plus fan base on social media, and earn tens of thousands of dollars. And he's not done yet, and he's going to talk about that in just a moment. So take a moment here, sit back, and listen in, because this young man is powerful. He's going to have a lot to share with you on how to set goals and get shit done. Corey, take it away. Oh, thank you very much. That's a very kind introduction. I love that you actually said get shit done because <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we probably have a broad audience on here, but uh, that, that's what it is. It is a, a no bullshit approach to the whole thing, but it's also a very fun one. Um, I thought I was going to have to tell my own story, but you did a better job than I could, so thank you for that. <laughs> so pretty much uh, I'll add a little bit that um, you know some may not be aware of as far as my story goes. And uh, it goes from one, you know, step of the the whole totem pole to the other, you know. And um, just to elaborate on that, I started off doing door-to-door sales, okay, which was, you know, one thing. And I've always wanted to be an actor, which is a whole other thing. Getting into the documentary filmmaking thing is one. Having an app business, an e-books business, uh, another online startup. Um, meeting some of my heroes, like you said, earning tens of thousands of dollars, traveling to places I've always wanted to, and uh, accomplishing a lot of bucket list things you know, that I never really thought that I would. But the majority of my accomplishments in my life have happened over the last, I would say, 17 months tops. And you know, since creating this dream book, I've been able to accomplish 15% of my entire life goals, and that's within a year and a half. So it's it's no BS. It really works. It may sound kind of woo-woo. I'm going to go through a, a few different things, but I promise you this will be the most fun out of everything you do. It's, it's, it actually is a whole lot of fun. So I want to start with a question. I want to, I want to talk to you guys and say, you know, 
a goal is a dream with a deadline. Okay, and the question is, do you know what your dreams are? It's a very powerful point because before we go into goal setting, we need to first identify what your dreams are. So, I mean, have you guys ever actually sat down and thought about what you truly want, what you truly love, what you truly want to accomplish in life, what obstacles are stopping you? You know, most people don't. And, you know, they end up doing what they feel they should as opposed to doing what they want. So I've created this tool called the Dream Book that really smashes through all that, and there's a few other steps to the process. But I just want everyone to know that when you're doing goals and when you're trying to set you know, what you do want to do, it takes the same amount of effort to do what you truly want to do, even if they're huge goals. Like you know, if you're still young and idealistic, it takes the same amount of effort to do those as it does to do the mediocre ones that you know, people have – badgered you down into believing that's all you can do or that's what you should do and those include but are not limited to going to school uh, working nine to five you know for a long time uh, only taking one trip a year um, not setting extreme goals like breaking a world record all these things that after a while we just start to think are not possible for us anymore and it's a real shame so I hope after this you guys really believe that you know you can do be or have whatever you want and I'll go through it uh, from one step to the next and uh, hopefully add some stories in between to make it interesting for you. So uh, just to show you the importance of goal setting and figuring out what you do want and creating an action plan and going towards and attaining it, I'm going to share a study with you, a couple stats. Now, some of you may have heard that whole, that old article back then about the Harvard students who, I think it was 3% of Harvard students set goals and out earned the entire other 97%. Uh, it ended up being a hoax, but it's, it's very well documented, very well cited. It's been cited over a thousand times in big publications. But they recently did a, a study to actually, I guess, look into that study and see if it was real. And turns out it wasn't. So I'm not going to tell you that, you know, it's a huge miracle worker and that it's, you know, totally going to obliterate everything you've ever heard. It's not true, but every uh, study that you do look up when it comes to goal setting always says the same thing, you know, whether it's by 200%, 100%, 50%, goal setters always outperform non-goal setters, no matter where you look. So uh, one good study I want to share with you guys is one from Dominican University that was just happened recently, and I'm going to go back to it a couple times throughout uh, the session. So out of 267 people uh, that were surveyed and I guess kind of followed in this study, they were asked to break up into five groups. And one of the groups didn't write any goals at all. And another actually did write goals out. And the goals included um, a variety of goals, really. And, uh, you know, completing a project, increasing their income, increasing productivity, getting organized, enhancing performance, balance, reducing work anxiety and skill acquisition, which is basically just learning a new skill. And out of those 267 surveyed, the ones who did set goals outperformed the ones who didn't by 30%. It's kind of obvious, right? But it is true. And every major study I've come across now, like I said, says that goal setters outperform those who do not set goals. But what I think is more interesting to note, and I was saying it earlier, is that it takes the same amount of effort to set goals that you think you should do as the ones that you truly want to do, the ones that you've been wanting to do since you were a kid that you may have given up on. It takes the same amount of effort. But before you set the goals, I want to really question you and ask, you know, why do you want to do what you want to do? Like, what is your why? You know, what gets you up in the morning? What would you do for no money? You know, what things have you always wanted to learn, but for some reason just couldn't find the time, right? The question that I think underlies all of those when it comes to your business, because I know this is a big thing what we're talking about here, um, ask yourself two questions, and this is going to pretty much set the pace for the rest of the, of the session. Do you want to change the world, or do you want to sit on a beach? And both are they're fine. You know, I'm, I'm not judging one or the other. That's totally up to you. Both are very valid, and both can make you equally happy, arguably. Right, But that's what you have to understand and decide for yourself. Do you want to change the world or do you want to sit on a beach? Because the businesses you create 
are going to be built around that philosophy, right? So, wow. you know, do you want to change the world? It could take more hours. Or do you want to build a business that gives you time freedom and monetary freedom? Like I said, both are the same, but start there, right? So I just want to share a story with you, and you don't have to have it all figured out, but at least answer yourself that question, really think about it, and we'll start to go from there. So for me, I've always wanted to be an actor. I've always wanted to, in some way, change the world or be the change that I want to be that I want to see in the world. And when I started on this challenge I'm on, which is a two-year challenge to retire my mom, I didn't quite know beyond actually retiring her what that could mean, you know, in my life. And as I've gone on, I've started to answer the questions and built around what I'm doing. So it really does start with just taking the first step. But that being said, when I did start this, I've realized this really is what I want to do. No matter what I want to do in my life, it, it's going to be in some way, shape, or form about changing the world. Whether I'm acting, whether I'm doing documentaries, whether I'm in startups, everything I want to do, I want it to be in some way, shape, or form an inspiration to others. I want it to inspire people. And I didn't quite know that right away at the beginning. But if I would have asked myself that question when I was a lot younger, even though I'm only 24, which may sound young to some people, um, if I would have known that from the get-go, it really would have shaped all my decisions. So just start with that. Now, this book I'm talking about is something I created, uh, geez, back in May, May or June of 2012. So actually just about a year ago today, which is kind of crazy. And um, when I was thinking about, you know, creating something to really help get my goals in order and figure out what I want to be, do, and have, I heard about these things called a vision board. Some of you may have heard about it. It's, you know, a Bristol board of pictures of things that you want to be, do, and have, right? And they are powerful. I actually had two. But I couldn't take them on the go, and they were very superficial. And what I mean by superficial was, you know, I, I put a picture of the Eiffel Tower because I wanted to go to Paris. But I didn't really understand why I wanted to go to Paris, right? So when I heard of this idea of creating a dream book, I thought, wow, this is 100 plus pages of things I have to, you know, want to be, do, and have. And for those of you who don't really know that, 100 pages is quite a lot, <laughs> especially after doing it. Uh, I know more about myself now than I ever have after creating something like this. Like, I had to really identify the why behind Paris. I had to identify exactly where I do want to live eventually and why I want to live there because I have to fill six pages of the house, <laughs> you know, and not just the house, like what's inside the house and why do you want that there, you know, and then you start thinking about, you know, can my business actually work in that location? What I'm doing, does that fit? All these questions you don't ask yourself because you think, oh, I'm going to have this dream house, I'm going to have this dream car, I'm going to have this dream life. But you don't actually think about the nitty-gritty, like, day-to-day -day life of the whole thing. And when you create a book like this, you really take the time to understand everything about yourself. And from that point forward, you build something around that, and you start accomplishing it way faster. And there is a little bit of stuff like the law of attraction that I do believe comes into play. But whether or not you do, either way, it's a great tool. So... I've created, I've, sorry, I've accomplished 15% of my life list in that period of time, I was saying. And a lot of that includes meeting heroes that, you know, I never thought or had the confidence in myself to believe that I could actually meet them or, um, you know, do these things I've always wanted to do. Things including, you know, meeting some of my favorite musicians. Um, a lot of it through serendipity, which would take me a while to explain, and I won't. But if anyone wants to email me after at Corey, C-O-R-E-Y dot Wadden, W-A-D-D-E-N at gmail.com, I'll gladly answer any questions you have about particular stories in the dream book that I've accomplished. But even small things like going to a wine vineyard, I've put in uh, the dream house I want to live in, the dream car I want to have. I put deadlines on all of them. And... Uh, it's just crazy how much you can accomplish within a year to think about that. You know, that means in less than 10 years, you've accomplished your entire life list. So that's pretty crazy to think about considering a lot of people don't accomplish, you know, 1% in a year. And that's just the fact of the matter, unfortunately. So, uh, Corey, can I stop you for just one second? I want to ask you a question about that. Is sure. the reason why you feel people don't 
don't get the goals accomplished is because with the tool that you're using, it's not handy to them to remind them of what their dream? I think that's part of it. I think it, I would say actually it's about 30% of the reminder aspect of having it with you all the time. But I would say the majority, the 70%, is because people don't actually take that much time to really think about what they want in their lives. Mm. Good, good. I just, I just wanted to clarify that because I, I love it, and I just wanted to ask because it was on my mind, and I, I figured some other people might have that same question too. So, and, um, and I do agree. I like the dream book concept much better. I had a vision board, and I'll admit for a moment, I used to hide my dream book when, I mean, my dream vision board, I'm sorry, when company mm-hmm. came over. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so uh, I think the dream book is a great concept for that. Okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Sorry, I didn't wanna, just wanted to ask that. Yeah, and, and that's that's true, too. I mean, when I had a vision board, I was actually the same way, just because I didn't really think about why I wanted a lot of the things on there. But when I did the book, it took me about a month to fully complete, but I became proud of all of the things on there because I knew exactly why I wanted them, and I knew I could defend them. On the vision board, I thought, okay, well, you know, I want to go to Paris once again, but, you know, why do I want to go there? And I was, I guess, almost in fear of being asked that question, oh, well, you know, everyone wants to go to Paris. Why would you not want to go to Paris, you know, that type of thing? But anyway, um, you don't have to actually keep a physical book. You can do something. I mean, there are great online tools like Pinterest uh, where you can actually have secret boards if you don't like people seeing what you want, you know, that's fine. You can keep them private, or you can make them public. And Pinterest is a great way to actually find these pictures, too. So the sections I created, and you can create your own sections, but you know this is a guideline. So I started off with, who is the person you want to become? There's an exercise um, in the book, Psycho-Cybernetics, that tells you to look at people who have what you want and study them so intensely that you could take them out for coffee and talk about their innermost passions and things that most don't know about, right? So look for qualities of character in people who have what you want and then put that in the book across a couple pages and highlight what qualities of character they have that you want to have in yourself, right? And talk about it as if you already do have those qualities. So, you know, if you want to be funnier, you know, because we do live in a, a world that's a little too serious sometimes, you know, say that no matter what interaction you're in with someone, you'll always make them laugh. In every encounter, your goal is to create one laugh, you know, with the person you're speaking with. That's that's a great that's a great example. Um, but the key is you can put pictures of those people, and then you know, maybe take a moment and uh, pretend in your mind that you are that person. You're dressing as that person. Take a photo of yourself in that moment, and always have that to look at as I guess more of a, a guideline. So start with that. Then look into bucket list things that you've always wanted to do. You know, maybe you want to go skydiving. You're the extreme sports lover. Um, Maybe you want to take a romantic vacation. Maybe you just want to have uh, one day where you just don't plan anything and it's completely spontaneous and you say yes to everything. That could be an experience. You know, you want to learn tango in Argentina, whatever it is. Put all of those things that you've always wanted to do and put them in there. And, and don't really think about, you know, whether you believe you can actually achieve them or not. Just take the time and think about, in an ideal world, if I was guaranteed success, what would I put in this book? Uh, skills you want to acquire. Some great examples are, you know, learning instruments or learning languages. I think in our day and age, we, we don't value skill acquisition as much as we should. Like the, the extra benefit of being able to speak a second language is profound, Definitely. So I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't um, neglect that. Material possessions, dream house, dream car, whatever things materially you want to possess, you throw those in there. Uh, people who will help you get there and your heroes to meet. So when you're thinking about all of these things that you're doing, you're going to want to think about who are the people um, that already have you know, what I want, that I look up to, my heroes for some way, shape, or form. And if you'd like to meet them, or people that are just great in uh, in general in the field, you know, maybe your aspiring career, um, someone who's top of the field there, you know, whether you're getting an internship with them and you go into your apprenticeship phase, maybe you want to meet them. No matter what the reason is why you want to meet them, just make sure you put them down there, because uh, there's something powerful about that section in particular. 
that I've noticed. Like within seven days, I had met someone from the book after making it through serendipity. So, and oh. they were not an they were not an easy person to reach. Um, your dream partner, and <laughs> I'm telling you, when you're very specific about who you want to be with, you'll never really end up in a relationship that you're not happy with because <laughs> you've taken some time to really think about um, who you want to meet. And I actually, for the first time, would like to share this story because I've never really talked about it before, but that section in partic particular, I went overboard with. I went like six pages, you know, in depth of the partner I wanted to be with. And um, it was pretty crazy because I think uh, I put that there and I wasn't really thinking about it. And then it was in October-ish. I finally thought, yeah, I think I'm ready now for this to happen. I just thought that. And um, I, I created this, I shared this post on Facebook, and it went semi-viral. And I had about 20 to 30 people add me on Facebook. And um, one of them um, added me, and, you know, she intrigued me. And she was the only one out of all of the people who added me that didn't speak to me and, or explain why she added me. So this entire month I'm wondering – you know, why is this person not talking to me? Who is this person? So eventually, I'm like, who the hell are you? <laughs> you know? <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and she ended up saying, well, uh, don't I know you? Didn't we go to school together? And I'm like, what school? And then she said, the school. And I said, no, I never went there. <laughs> and she's like, <laughs> oh, well, that's weird. And um, we ended up chatting and whatnot. And it was like this complete misunderstanding. But as I got to know her, I realized she was like every care, every uh, quality in the book, which is like even like like I've always loved classic Hollywood, you know, the 1950s, that era of Hollywood. I've always loved that, and um, I wanted someone who appreciated that. And uh, this girl, to a T, that was like what she loves, you know, as much as I do, which is so rare. And uh, in my book, one person I want to study under for acting one on one is this guy Larry Moss, who's like. Not the most well-known. He kind of is, but, I mean, it's so rare. And sure enough, she had sat in on one of his classes and had a, a book signed by him. So there's all these really weird things that were super specific that she fit, and I really can't explain it. So I'm not here to try and explain the science of it, but I'm just saying from my own personal experience, there's been some crazy things that have happened from that book, um, and, and they keep happening in succession more and more. And last, uh, travel. Think about the places you want to travel to in the world, but more specifically, once again, think about why you want to travel to them and try and associate those things with the other aspects of your book. So, like, if there's a person you want to meet and you know they're in your dream location, just, you know, if you have the time and the money, get on a friggin' plane and go down and meet them. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, and cross mm -hmm. off your two things. Just, just do it, you know? And when you start actually crossing things off, I promise you it's addictive. And there's studies on it. So, like, it's it's called the, the – when you're thinking of habits, they're called keystone habits. And they're habits that you form, very small ones, that start a chain reaction of other habits that start to accompany that. For example, if you're waking up in the morning, studies show that if you make your bed when you wake up, you'll be more productive for the rest of your day. And in general, you'll become more productive because that's a keystone habit. That's in the book, The Power of Habit. Um, as far as the small victories co are concerned, um, there's, a, there's a chemical in your brain called dopamine that's released every time you accomplish something you set out to do. So if you can get over and do some small things very quick, you start building confidence. And winning is a habit. You talk to anyone who's a, a champion in sports. I talked to a nine-time kickboxing world champion. Um, along my journey, and he was the first person to say that winning is a habit. You need to early on create scenarios that work in your favor so you can win. And once you do that, you'll have the confidence to go after more challenging things. So make sure that you do include things that you, know, you can do today or tomorrow and do them. And the confidence that it instills will make you more excited to look at your dream book more often. Um, but also just to accomplish the goals in general, you'll have the confidence it needs and requires to go after the more challenging ones. So 
that is the dream book in essence. Um, you can really go anywhere to pick up something like that. I recommend a company called Paper Blanks. I have no affiliation with them, but they just make some really, really cool journals. Um, just like really, really cool journals. They have, uh, like mine, for example, is uh, Da Vinci it has his inscriptions all on the outside, and it's his drawings and notes that are inscribed in the cover of his theory on the light as it reflects against the sun, sorry, reflects against the moon from the sun. You can find ones from other outliers like Mozart, um, really like Darwin, all of the greats, and there's just some other really cool looking ones too. They're not expensive, but I promise you, if you have a cool looking book, you'll also be more inclined to look at it often. And that's the point is we're trying to get you to look at this thing as often as possible. I agree. So, you know, and you also have, because um, I know we have a little bonus for from you too, which is a very extensive article uh, post on your site where you break down and show your book, and we'll share that a little bit later. Do you have the links to those companies or one of the companies inside that, inside of that uh, resource for people to find that? Uh, yeah, on the comment section, actually, uh, the company I'm talking about featured me on their blog because they really liked it. So if you that. just yeah, if you just look on that post and go down to the bottom in the comment section, Paper Blanks actually um, posts a response saying, check out the article here for uh, on our blog, and that will link you to their website, and you can look at all their stuff online. You'll have to order it online. They do; they are sold in some stores, but they don't have their own store. Okay. So, Wonderful. yeah. Okay. All right, so from from there... Uh, you have your vision, right? You have everything that you want to be, do, and have, you know, idealistically, not thinking about how it's going to happen yet, but just what you want. And from there, we're going to start building goals around it. Now, I would argue to you that the biggest reason why people fail with goals is, uh, is actually two reasons, but I'll talk about the first now and the second after. The first is they're not specific enough. They're not measurable. They're not smart. And it's an acronym, and I'll explain what that is. So when you're creating your goals, you want to make sure that first they're specific. So instead of saying, I want to lose weight for the summer, you're going to say, I want to lose 10 pounds. Measurable means that, you know, how much, how many, how will I know when it's accomplished? So you say, okay, well, 10 pounds, again, is measurable and specific, right? Attainable. Is it attainable? How can the goal be accomplished? Do you have it figured out yet? Sometimes you won't always have it figured out, but you need to have at least a start or a starting point. Relevant. Is it relevant to what you really want? Does it seem worthwhile? Is it the right time? Does this match our other efforts and needs? Are you the right person right now? Is it the right time? Is it acceptable? And then last time bound, set a deadline. So you know, when can I accomplish this? Should it be within six months, three months, a month, etc.? When you are setting your – yeah? I'm sorry, one, one, one quick question. Um, mm -hmm. Could you go over those those acronym one more time and everyone to write that down if they'd like to, just to have it in their, in their own notes, just, you know, for their own for their own records? I'd love to have that. Have that. Sure. Cleared. Yeah. So SMART stands for Specific, Measurable – attainable, relevant, and time-bound. Perfect. Thank you. Right? No problem. And so just to go over that example again of, of the losing weight, specific, 10 pounds, measurable, also 10 pounds, relevant, you know, why do you want to lose the weight? What's it for? It could be a part of your overall goal of being more healthy, so you can live longer, or maybe you're trying to impress somebody. You know, maybe you're looking for your ideal partner and you want to make sure that you look um, your best, right? Mm -hmm. Is it relevant to you? Does it, you know, is it the right time right now to go after that, or can you put it on hold? Because you're constantly going to ask yourself this when you're looking through your dream book, which is your base point at all times. So you're going to look at that and say, is this goal right right now? Is it relevant to where I am in my life right now? You know, Maybe jumping out of an airplane isn't <laughs> isn't right for you right now, you know? Mm -hmm. Maybe right. traveling to another part of the world isn't right for you right now because you're still just thinking about what kind of business you want to start, you know? Right. 
and uh, time bound. So what's the deadline? And deadlines are extremely important. There's an example of this gentleman, for the life of me, I can't think of his name, but he is a forward thinker in mathematics. And uh, there was a story of where he was enrolled in the army. And for years, he had done writings on math. It, it's actually highlighted in the book Mastery during the creative active phase, which is a great book as well, Mastery by Robert Greene. So this guy had spent, it was like 10 years trying to write these thesis papers on mathematics, and it wasn't until he was forced into a situation where they were going to battle, even though they didn't want to, and he was enrolled, so he had to go, and he knew there was a good chance he was going to die. So he went out, and he literally wrote from sunset to sunrise without sleeping, and it all jotted out because he knew it was his last opportunity before he might die. And sure enough, he did pass away that day. And the crazy thing was that the writing he did had been cited for decades after, and people were baffled and could not come to a conclusion on how he was able to come up with that. Like it was so ahead of its time. That's an extremely uh, extreme example. But the idea is when you set deadlines, your brain kicks into action, and you need to set immediate deadlines to what you do, i.e. trying to retire somebody in two years from scratch. It's a pretty immediate and tough deadline, but it gets you in the gear. It kicks your butt in the gear. Get shit done. You guys will see we'll keep coming yeah. back to that. Absolutely. So that's what you want to you wanna do there. From there, when you do identify if it is the right time and you set the, the deadline on your goals, you're going to start wondering who can help you get there. And you can call this your personal board of advisors. So you can call this your accountability buddy. Um, but to go back to that original study of the goal setters versus the non-goal setters, you'll remember I said 30 per, sorry, the people who set goals outperformed by the non-goal setters by 30%, or well, the people who set goals and had an accountability person that they gave a progress report to once a week, outperformed the goal setters by 20% and the non-goal setters by 50%. So having someone, I'll repeat that stat in a second, but having someone to hold you accountable that you give a progress report to of how you're doing towards those goals once per week or twice per week whenever you want to do it, but once per week is fine. There's something about making it public, we're afraid to disappoint others, we'll disappoint ourselves before we disappoint others, which is doesn't really make sense, but studies show that's always the case. So find a group of people, two or three works, one is a great start, but choose someone that is not going to be okay with you failing. Don't choose your nice friend who's going to be like, oh, you know, that's great. Sure, try harder next time. I'm sure you you know, you know, did your best, right? And you're like, yeah, of course I did. They're like, great. Well, you know, keep trying. Do not ask that person because you will make no progress. Choose someone who is like a drill sergeant who is going to call you on your faults, and you're not going to like it at first. I'm telling you, you probably won't. And if you're afraid to ask that person because you know how tough it is, that is the person you have to ask. You need to have someone like that in your life. And uh, oftentimes, if you can find someone who does have what you want, that is the basis of a mentorship relationship, which is not required. So, and that's a whole other talk. But finding people that will help you get there and accountability people are great ways to go about it. So, just to kind of go over everything again, ask yourself why you want to do things. You know, as a company, there's a great, great talk on uh, TED. Uh, from a gentleman named Simon Simek, I do believe his name is, Simon Simek. And uh, it's about the power of why in business. And Apple is a great example of a company who has their why, right? They're the only company who can create a personal computer, a digital MP3 player, a TV, um, a portable iPad, a tablet, and phone. And we don't question it, you know, like if, Dell made a phone, you'd be like, what the heck's going on? You think it's really weird, right? Um, I hadn't thought about that, but, but we, it's true. 
<laughs> yeah, and and if you look at Apple, it's because Apple's mission is to always innovate and always create change in the world. And now we're like, wow, I wish Apple made pants, you know. <laughs> I wish, you know, <laughs> Apple made pools, you know. Like that's what it comes down to. So when you understand your why, it doesn't matter if you're changing careers or, or whatever. You'll find that it's always in line, and people will understand why you're doing what you're doing. So understand that. The second thing, once again, is to ask yourself. Do you want to change the world or do you want to sit on a beach? And like I said again, either fine, either create something that uh, goes towards that or create something that creates time freedom for you to go and do whatever you want. And you can have both too, but chances are usually people are more inclined to go one way or the other way. After that, create some kind of thing, physical thing that you can look at and feel and touch, whether it's a book, a board, um, Pinterest online, at least print the pictures out and go after that, create the book, really take time to think about what you want to be, do, and have. And then from there, create smart goals that are going to help you get there in that specific time. I suggest writing yearly goals and working back from there. Start with yearly, go back to quarterly, back to monthly, and then finally back to weekly and then you'll write your daily to-dos each day. So that's the way you'll do that. After that, find people who are gonna help you get there, have your personal board of advisors, or just one even, and have them hold you accountable and give them progress reports each day. And I would ask that every three months, every three to six months, you look back at that dream book and you start anew and you say, and you reevaluate all of the things in there. You say, is this the right time now? Is it relevant for me? And if it is now, go after it. Because I tell you, if you don't believe that you can achieve the things within six months, it's not worth going into it yet. Because if you don't even believe you can do it, there's no point in starting it. So always choose. The relevance is super key, super, super key. And, uh, yeah, I hope that helps you guys. I hope it gives you a good start. I'm telling you, you will accomplish at least three to four X what you would if you didn't do this, guaranteed. And I would love to hear about everyone's progress um, as you do it. And you can follow my challenge, which is my two-year challenge to retire my mom, um, on my webpage, my blog, uh, social media. Either way, it's Millionaire by 25, whether it's .com, Facebook, Twitter, it's all the same, Millionaire by 25. Wow. Wow. You know, I knew you were the best person to talk to about this. Well, you know, I want to say something, too, first of all, because, you know, some people, again, you know, when, when I heard you speak, when you did this lecture at the university and I saw it on YouTube, I was instantly attracted to, because it's not like this concept or this, you know, story of doing dream books and vision boards and all of that is anything that's new. I mean, this has been on the on the scene or on the mindset of, of, of people now since The Secret came out several years ago. And, you know, for all intent and purposes, I think now a lot of people aren't really talking about all of that as much. And mm -hmm. so what made it really stand out for me, and particularly why I asked you to be a part of this program, is because, you know, I don't know how old you were when The Secret came out. It's not that The Secret's that old. We were probably like in your teens at least uh, when mm -hmm. that came out. And I would think that anyone that's a teenager, especially a teenage boy, wouldn't be paying attention to stuff like that. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. so um so, you know, to see you, you know, as a young man in your early 20s uh, speaking about these topics, it really resonated with me because I thought, wow, here is someone that is with his peers because you're speaking at a university, and mm -hmm. you're talking about something that, quite frankly, you know, your parents would be talking about, you know, and yeah. even then, even only a, a specific type of parent would be talking about something like a dream book. But, you know, you made me, it was a couple of things that came to my mind, and one thing I wanted to say off the bat is that you just reminded me of something, like I said, I'm literally twice your age, and you reminded me of something that I had forgotten I had done when I was your age. Mm -hmm. um, when I was in my early 20s, I really thought I wanted to be a designer. Mm -hmm. And um, I used to live in Texas where I grew up, and I, would, and I made this um, decision to go and interview really successful New York designers. And I wrote them letters, and I said, I'm coming to Manhattan, 
and I want to sit down with you, and I want to pick your brain. I want to know how to get into this business. And I had completely forgotten that I had done that until you were talking. That's awesome. And I got on a plane. I flew to New York. I had no confirmed appointments. I just went and decided I was just going to show up at their office, and they were going to talk to me. And what happened? And uh, two of them, uh, two of uh, I did speak with one on the phone. One mm-hmm. I actually did come by and, and go to uh, her store. It was uh, Norma mm-hmm. Kamali, to be exact. Mm-hmm. And the other one um, wrote me a letter and said, you know, I appreciate your tenacity because I never did say I would ever meet with you, but the fact <laughs> that you're <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> But the fact that you're here and may and I thought about it for a second as you were speaking, it made me think maybe when you're you know, when you're younger you don't you know, you just don't you're not affected by no. Not you know, at all. But yeah. just when you get older, you just decide I want something and I'm gonna do it. But it reminded me and I wanna first thank you for that because it reminded me of the fact that I think I've always loved to interview fascinating people. Mhm. And so fast forward, you know, all these years later, I'm doing it still. But that reminded me of that and how far I was willing to go at that point in my life to talk to that person. And it's something very powerful about taking action even when you have no solid evidence that what yeah. you're trying to do is actually going to happen. It just it, – it can't help but shift you. Yeah, definitely. It, I Go ahead. Well, I want to say this one last point, and I want you to I want you to share your point. Is that sure. it's the number one thing that I would say one out of ten, two maybe, will actually do. Yes. Yes. You know. Yep. It's, I it's, totally. It's really fascinating. We we look at people who we look, you know, we see as idols, and we look at them, and we say, oh, you know, how did they achieve that? How did they get where they are? How did they, you know, accomplish this and what have you? You know, and now, again, because of I was mentioning earlier, reality TV, now so much more stuff is in our face, if you yeah. will. And I find that really, if you really look at some of those particular, you know, quote-unquote reality stars, one – well, in my opinion, you know, they're the ones who basically have no problem making a fool of themselves on, you know, <laughs> yes. you know, um, on national TV. But, you know, aside from that, is that successful people are the ones, the 10%, mm-hmm. the 20%, mm-hmm. who are willing to do the thing past the no when everyone else has been told no and will stop and walk away. Mm-hmm. Yep, I totally agree. I think you, you made a really, really good point there. What I want to highlight is, you know, whether you're 15 or 75, you know, on the phone right now listening in, it doesn't matter. You know, it's just that people who are younger still think anything's possible, typically, right? But the reason why things like the dream book and especially the dream book are so important is that when you put it in there, and you really feel like it's what you want, it's that look in your eye when you go after it. You know, I mean, the people that were, who ended up meeting with you, it didn't matter if you were your age now. It's just that, that you had that look in your eye, and, and you can get that still. It doesn't matter. And they see it. And what's crazy is people who have that when they're older actually look 10, 20 years younger because they're finally energized again, and they're finally excited about it, you know. And a lot of times I've found that they lose that after a certain age. But when you do these things, everything in your life becomes an adventure again. Everything becomes exciting, you know. All these things that I can just tell you that I have to be always working towards something that I want. I have to or else I'm miserable now. And, like, for me, the misery that I feel is what people go through with a smile on their face every single day as they go to work or as they do things that they really don't want to do. But they just they just think that that's all they can do, you know, so they go after the mediocre. But once you start going after what you truly believe you deserve and, what, you know, what you really want in your life, you won't settle for anything less. And you're always going to be in some way, shape, or form going after that. And that, that doesn't mean that you're a workaholic, let me clarify. It just means that you're living every moment to the fullest. You know, if you're sitting there and, you know, you want to have a beer and relax or whatever, 
I mean, just really enjoy that beer, <laughs> you know, like really right. sip the right. hell out of that beer and, and just live it to the fullest. Do you know what I mean? Right. And uh, if I may, I, I don't want to go over too much, but no, 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 you're share. fine. You're fine. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. So you said that. Um, I do little experiments with people who are close to me now. So my girlfriend right now is going through um, a bit of a bit of a life change herself, and uh, she was. You know, she's younger, she's 23, very pressured by her parents to go after uh, a certain career that she didn't really want to do. And that can be very tough, you know, for someone at that age when you're being heavily influenced um, in those situations to go and down a path you may not actually want. And it's, it's a story that's as old as time. It's always been that way. Um, but she ended up building up enough confidence to do something that she really believed in, and it took a lot for her to do it. And I'm telling you, this is the art of getting started. This is the art of the first step. So what happened was uh, she she decided she was going to sign up for this course for, funny enough, event design. You're talking about designing. Well, guess what? That happens in New York. So it's kind of somewhat parallel to yours, right? And uh, she signed up for this course from this guy named Preston Bailey, who is a top performer I in the industry. <laughs> oh, there you go. There you go. So Preston Bailey, and she loves this guy, right? And uh, I'm like, okay, well, you know, sign up for it. It's like 100 bucks a month, something like that. And if you complete the course, you do have a chance of getting an internship with Preston. And as, you know, she was doing it, uh, you know, she had moments, as we all do when we're starting, you know, we kind of drift in and out of the motivation. And I was like, you know, check, you know, let's, let's, get, let's get it going. Just, just do it. And when she did, she looked at the event page, and like the very last page, it was like the third page of the events, there was this thing coming up in Vegas. And uh, it's funny because she had started thinking about who she, pardon me, who she was going to put in her dream book, and there was like three event designers, and every single one of them was going to be there. And she's like, holy cow, and I'm like, you got to go do this. So this girl takes the money that she was supposed to have for her utilities, and... <laughs> And gets the course and books the plane, right? Kind of crazy, but, you know, you're young, whatever. She hops on it. She goes there. And just for the sake of timing, I won't go into too much, like, too much detail, but she ended up getting FaceTime with Preston and the two other outliers, got pictures with all of them, and then got verbal confirmation that either Preston Bailey or Colin Cowie, two, two of the top performers in the industry, but both like her to intern for them in the summertime in New York. I love it. So, like, just just to illustrate that and just, like, repoint it out, you know, if she's listening to this, she'll probably kill me for, for telling people, but I think people need to know <laughs> is that you need to take your first step, and uh, there's a great example in The Alchemist, the book The Alchemist, that there's this idea of beginner's luck. I'm telling you, once you start and you start going towards what you want, the universe, for some reason, really works in your favor at first to give you that courage, you know, those small wins. Right. Right. And just, I'm telling you, the start's always the easiest part. And after you get that and you have a taste of it, there's no going back. Yeah. I call it green lights. You get a green light. If you're not quite sure, you do something. But you have to take some kind of action. And I'll take it a step further. Mm -hmm. I honestly feel that you won't get the next instruction until mm -hmm. you do what's in front of you to do. Mm -hmm. And once you've done that and you've shown that I'm going to take a leap of faith on my behalf, mm -hmm. then I believe the ten steps are made in your behalf in, in kind. But that won't happen until you do something. So until you're willing to send in the money for the ticket to go to Vegas or you're willing to, you know, go pick up the catalog and see something that inspires you or put put, your, put pictures inside your dream book or make a decision that you're going to do something that, quite frankly, and I'll even go a step further. To me, if it almost seems like what you're going to do logically makes no sense, is the thing that you should run to. Mm-hmm. I, I really do believe that. I've seen it in my life over and over again. It's like it just doesn't make logical sense that I would do this. But if it's not going to hurt you or anyone else around you, I say run to it because there's something in that for you, but you won't know until you take that step. Mm -hmm. 
So I think that's very, very, very powerful. And thank you for sharing that, you know, that story. I wanted to, I know we're, we're getting close to the end of our time, but I did want to share something that you had said about Pinterest. I know we're talking about creating dream books in and of itself, but mm-hmm. uh, you had mentioned Pinterest as well. And I don't know if you are familiar with or any of the listeners are, are familiar with Barbara Corcoran, who is one of the um, – one of the chief uh, in- investors on the show Shark Tank. Uh, no. Uh-huh. Yeah, she's a, a New York investor. I mean, super powerful, very successful woman. And I recently heard her say that she doesn't uh, she doesn't recommend necessarily when you're starting out a business. Uh, and this is a super powerful woman writing out. Um, Using a, a business plan, like a, a, a huge formal business plan, her business plan she recommends to people who are just getting started out is, start, is to create a Pinterest board. Yes. You know, she said that's what she used to grow her real estate company was looking at images of who she wanted to be, how she would dress, where she would live, what kind of relationship she would have. And she that reminded her every single day as she was out there in the very beginning hustling in a market mm-hmm. that tough to mm-hmm. become a multimillionaire that she is now. So there's, yeah. there's, there, this isn't woo-woo. <laughs> yeah. Major people are doing this process. They may not talk about it, yeah. <laughs> you know, like Corey yeah. and I are right now, but they're doing it or something similar. Oh, and I can second that. I mean, and, and I have. I think I've studied. I've spent – over 1,000 hours studying outliers over the course of this last year and a half, over 1,000 hours. It's been an obsession for me. Um, and the majority all do this stuff in one way, shape, or form. They all do it, whether they use a dream book or whatever. They have some form of visual representation of the vision they want, and that includes who they want to be, what they want to do, what they want to have, where they want to travel, all these things, because it is the vision that motivates us and inspires us. It's not necessarily, you know, what's on paper, like you said, with the business plan. That makes a lot of sense to me, too. Right, right, right. Well, and it's on those days when it's really the toughest, when it becomes really easy, as I kind of jokingly said this morning, when it's really kicking your when <laughs> it's kicking your butt and you're driving by McDonald's and you kind of scratch your head for half a second and go, well, I wonder if they're hiring. Really, you know, you have to have something to sustain you beyond just that, um, just that, you know, quote unquote, uh, business plan, that business plan you can't cur- curl up with when you're really feeling like you're just kind of beaten and you're not quite sure what to do next. So, mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's the whole thing is uh, creating those stakes and having uh, the accountability partner also helps you get through that kind of stuff because you know that if you do give in to that, you got to explain it to somebody and why you made that decision, right. which is tough. You know, Which is. And Barbara Winter yesterday morning said something very similar. She says, you know, you want to keep yourself – you don't want to be – she said two things. She says, one, don't surround yourself with dream killers, and don't you be one to someone else. Yes. Very, very important, hugely important. I've written something on that, actually. And uh, the thing is is that people don't realize they're doing it, and that's the scary part. You know, they – in saying. their hearts – in their hearts, they feel like they're helping you by giving you that advice. But here's the key principle, right? You don't typically listen to people who do not have what you want. If you do, it better be someone who's put in a whole lot of time of studying people who have things that you want. You know, Like there are experimenters, and I would consider myself at this point still an experimenter because I'm in my apprenticeship phase, and I have pulled off a lot of crazy stuff. Um, but specifically for what you're looking for, I guarantee I've studied someone who has what you want, and I can clearly say that, yes, these overlying principles carry through universally to every career and, uh, and every lifestyle. So that's a huge thing is selective ignorance and, you know, who do you listen to? You know, like if your parents have been married, you know, for ages and the, the – the, I mean, this is really archetypal in general – I'm not trying to be sexist. I'm just saying, you know, if the man deals with the finances here and your mom is trying to give you financial advice, why would you listen to a woman who's never dealt with finances? You know, Um, 
why would you listen to someone who's a pro tennis player about how to be a professional baseball player? You know, mm-hmm. it's just you really got to think about that, and that's the fastest point. So even when you're reading books, read books from people who have what you want, not who don't have what you want. And if they don't, make sure that they're an experimenter and have studied the people who have what you want. Those are those are huge points, huge huge points, especially at the beginning. And that's why that that uh, finding out who you want to become is so important because you can finally look at the people who've accomplished what you have and when you study them that intensely you've seen that they've probably gone through a lot of the same feelings and emotions that you may be currently experiencing now you know and it feels great to see someone and relate to someone who's actually went out and did what you want to do and has gone through the same things you have it gives you this sense of confidence that even if you're in the worst environment with friends who aren't supportive and a family who is just against what you're trying to do, you now have someone to relate to that can be a mentor from afar, whether it's through the book, through a, their documentary or whatever, right. and uh, put them in your dream book to meet because like people like Tim Ferriss for me, when I started getting into business, he was a guy that I really, really wanted to meet. And, uh, you know, serendipity, boom. Won a, won a contest and sure enough was trained by him. So these things happen all the time and it's just, just yeah, getting you know, started. You really need to be, absolutely. You know, you need to be really guarded of your dreams. And as I said, and even as you're qualifying the people that you want to take advice from too, you mm-hmm. want to also make sure that not even that they may have, they may on the surface have what you want to have based on what you're seeing but you also want to take your time i think to vet really well because we don't always know the backstory Mm -hmm. behind how someone actually got something so i also very i I like to add that addendum on to what you had you know mentioned earlier about about the parents you know it's like everyone has their story around it they might on the surface look like they're doing really well but you want to see what cost they're paying to have it Mm-hmm. And you want to make sure that you know, because you know, you get information from that too. I honestly feel, yeah. um, oh, and yeah. that you're getting that you know that you're modeling people who are really in good alignment. You know, because you can have a drug dealer that has a lot of money, but you may you may want the money, but not the way they actually exactly. received it. So, <laughs> exactly. So, uh, exactly. Yeah. So vet really well. I would say you're only for those of you listening. If you haven't even, if you don't even own a dream book yet, I would say your next action step would be to either pick one up or start a Pinterest uh, board, um, mm-hmm. and that would be your first step. And then use that process to get really clear about what you want and be willing to go for it. And um, you know, you will be able to create, I believe, anything that you really want. You just have to be willing to step into it and say yes and wait for instruction and keep answering that call and keep moving forward. So, Core, we have about maybe a minute, 30 seconds. Any last uh, little words for us? Or Sure. Sure, I'd absolutely like to share. Uh, first off, just a couple more resources for people who are looking to uh, have other means of uh, some kind of visual representation of what you want. There's a new app called Everest. If you have an iPhone, it's great. If you're looking to um, have a thing that helps you form new habits, There's a great app called Lyft, and it is L-I-F-T for iPhone as well. I'm not sure if it's on Android yet, but it is social, so you can have your accountability partner check in on you because you set your habits you're trying to form and your goals, and you have to check into them every single day, and your accountability partner can see if you skip a day. So that's a great tool as well. Um, Outside of those resources, I'd just like to finish by saying that we really have a finite amount of time on planet Earth. And it can be long, it can feel long and in a good way, and you can live a full life uh, of everything you've ever wanted to do. You've only got one shot at it. And I'm telling you, when you do start, you're going to realize even more how finite the world is. And once you get started, you're going to start questioning things even more in a good way. You're going to question um, what you really want constantly, you know, but the idea is to just get started on that. And, um, maybe you've already started and you just have to reevaluate. Maybe this is just what you needed to hear and you already knew it, but you'll end up thinking about it more once you get started in a good way. And you just won't accept 
mediocrity. Don't accept mediocrity. I mean, if you're on this call, you're not accepting mediocrity. So you should at least give yourself some congratulations just for listening in. You know, that's that's really key. Or even lasting to the end of the call, you're ahead of most people. So don't be so hard on yourself in that regard either. But just remember that you can accomplish a whole lot in a short amount of time too. Like you can accomplish more in one year than you have in the last decade. If you know exactly what you're going after. Wasn't that a great discussion? I hope you got a lot of value out of that interview with Corey. Again, like I said, we did that interview quite a while ago, but as I said, it, it was quite powerful and I feel something that is just as relevant today as it was when we first recorded it. So this is what I recommend you do at this point moving forward. I recommend that you go to getpayforyourcreativity.com forward slash 023 for all the updated links to all the show notes and all of the uh, links to all of the things that Corey mentioned. Also, I'll add some updates for new things that might be there now, maybe in a few newer things that I wasn't there when I initially recorded the interview. So I recommend you go check that out. Again, at getpayforyourcreativity.com forward slash 023. And you'll find all those links there. And uh, again, I would love to hear what you're creating, what you're working on, what it inspired you, what inspired you the most. What are you ready to start working on now? You know, again, as I said at the top of the interview, a lot of times we don't get into the mindset to start thinking about goals and goal setting until the beginning of the new year. And I'm going to say to you now, don't wait. Don't wait until 2020. Uh, to start thinking about that. Start thinking about it now. You know, you may not accomplish it in the remainder of 2019, but what a great head start. If you start now, this is September the 3rd of 2019, and you're listening to this maybe on the day or sometime within that time frame. And if you get started now, you're going to be actually four months ahead <laughs> of a lot of other people getting started in the beginning of the new year. So uh, re-listen to this a couple of times, get a, a book, a guide, some sort of Pinterest board, whatever you need to do, start creating those goals, start thinking about what you want to create, get into the, the passion of it, the vision of it, see yourself actually doing it, get into the energy of that, and then, um, start working on it now. And like I said, don't wait until December the 31st of 2019 to get started creating your dreams, work on those things now. So again, I'll see you on the episode, the next episode of the podcast and have a great rest of your week. Take care. We have entered the age of creative self-employment. In the new economy, people are creating true security for themselves. That's why I believe there's never been a better time in history to monetize your gifts. So if you're ready to take control of your financial and creative future, I have something for you. It's my free audio and PDF program, 57 Ways to Monetize Your Gifts and Create True Security for Yourself. And you can get that at my website, getpayforyourcreativity.com forward slash 57 Ways Gift.